Welcome everybody to this episode of the Halfway Motors Nissan vlog. I am your host, Marcus Luff, general manager of the dealership, and I'm joined today with sales consultant Ty Alderdice. And uh, what we're going to be talking about today is leasing versus financing. It's one of the areas that we get a lot of questions on during the sales process. And it's an area that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's an area that we seem to feel that consumers could use a little bit of education on, right? Like it's, it's not something that's well understood all the time. Absolutely. Even, even sometimes amongst staff when, we, when they first start in the industry, right? Absolutely. It's just, it's, it's not about trying to convince someone to lease or finance. It's just another option to purchase your vehicle. And it comes down to one thing, money. And the lease is generally always less money than the finance, generally, of generally, the generally, right? Yeah, yeah. So, what are some of the benefits uh, to leasing? If you had a customer in front of you, or if I was your customer and I was unsure of if I wanted to lease or if I wanted to finance, what would you tell me? Uh, first thing is, what's your budget? Um, how long do you have your vehicle for? What's your typical shopping experience? Do you hold your vehicle for a longer time? Um, at which point, leasing could still work. Um, what do you know about financing over leasing? How much do you like car shopping? Uh, multiple things you can ask mm -hmm. for a customer. But again, it boils down to the payment. Yeah. yeah. Now, in Nissan's world, I don't know about other manufacturers, but in Nissan's world, there are obviously <clears throat> restrictions on a lease, right? Mostly around kilometers. Right? Yeah. Most people, in, in especially in Thunder Bay, think they drive more than they do. Um, I have customers who live out past Kekebeka enter into leasing. Uh, myself, I've been leasing since 1997. My father got me into it and I've never looked back. I like the idea of getting into a vehicle every two, three, four, or possibly five years. Um, whatever works for your budget. Um, with everything being so close here in Thunder Bay, the average person tends to drive 15, maybe 20,000 kilometers a year and that's why Nissan Nissan's leasing program is fantastic. And I would argue that that would even almost be a high kilometer count. You're right. Like when I was in service, I remember seeing people 13,000 be closer to the average, but... That's right. <coughs> like myself, I've been leasing my vehicle for almost a year and a half and I just broke the 15,000 mark and I've driven as much as I need to. I've gone down to the States and I've driven all around Thunder Bay and out to Kekebeka multiple times and I'm still well within my limit, and I've chose 20,000 kilometers for myself a year. Now that's a good point. Nissan actually has two sets of two sets of kilometers, correct, or, or distances available on the lease, right? The regular, which is 20,000, 20,000, and then extended, which is 24. Right. So you'd ask yourself, it's not so much how many kilometers a year do you drive, how much do you foresee yourself driving in a select term? So if you were leasing for five years, do you think you'd drive 100,000 kilometers in five years or 120? Mm -hmm. And because it really doesn't matter at the end of the term, as long as you're not, as, you're, as long as you're within that 120,000 kilometers, if that's what you've chosen. Right, and that's a good point. So you could do 40,000 in your first year. Absolutely. And then 10,000 in your second year, 10,000 in your third year, and as long as it washes out at the end of the term within, 100%. it doesn't matter. It's not like you're reporting every year how many kilometers you've driven. Exactly. <clears throat> so uh, explain, explain to the viewers why the lease is a lower payment. Well, it comes down to Nissan holding the cards. Um, in both scenarios, Nissan owns the vehicle. So it's just really words, right? When you're financing, Nissan owns the vehicle. If you're leasing, Nissan owns the vehicle in this case. Unless you're writing a check, then you own the vehicle. So Nissan's taking on the depreciation end of things. So they're taking the risk of what the vehicle's worth at the end. And there's an optional, keyword is optional, purchase at the end and Nissan feels that the vehicle could be worth X amount of dollars and that's not your concern. You have the option to purchase it at the end and if it's a good vehicle for you and you feel no need to get into another vehicle then by all means purchase the vehicle. But if you're like 99% of the people, myself included, at the end of your lease you say, ah, you know what, I like the bigger better or the newer and or a different vehicle altogether and go into that. 
Right. So with the lease payment itself is actually so if the if the car is worth forty thousand, you buy a forty thousand dollar car. Yeah. Let's for simple math say at the end of your term, three, four, five years, whatever you happen to do, the vehicle is worth twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, approximately fifteen to twenty. Right. So you've got twenty thousand dollars left in the vehicle. All you've paid for during those three, four, five years is that first twenty thousand dollars, right? Correct. That's why the payment's less. Whereas if you were to finance that forty thousand dollar car over five years, you would be financing the full the forty thousand dollars. The whole thing, including <clears throat> the taxes on that forty thousand right. dollars. So with a lease, you're only paying the taxes on your payment. Right. Not and the that's overall. that's a good distinction to it's make huge. as well, because that's could be half the vehicle, right? Half Absolutely. the price of the vehicle. Absolutely. Thirteen percent is is a fair amount of money. Absolutely. So you've done up some examples here um, on a 2017 Rogue SL Platinum. Correct. Uh, for just real quick comparison purposes, why don't you walk us through what the payment is that you've made and explain the difference between them. So this vehicle after taxes is a 41000 almost $42,000 vehicle after taxes. And I've done an apples to apples comparison. So uh, a lot of customers like to finance their vehicle for five, six, or seven years. So I've done a five year for, for starts. Um, now Nissan's got a program that I can give you a great chunk of money off. We've chosen that uh, for financing and then an additional money's off for financing. So I'm gonna give you $1,850 off. If you were to bi-weekly payment that vehicle over a five-year term with nothing down, mm -hmm. your payment would be $337 every two weeks. Every two weeks. And for some, they say, well, that's affordable or not. You'd say it depends on the term, right? Yep. So if you wanted to extend it, you'd go on and your payment would drop. If we were to do the same scenario on a lease, we're not going to have that finance dollars, but I'm still going to be able to give you a chunk of money off. And that same vehicle over the five year term, semi monthly, so two payments a month, is $240. So, so that's almost $100 less. Correct. For the exact same vehicle to own it for the exact same amount of time. Correct. Now, the other thing that is really attractive about the lease, and we're seeing this more and more now in this industry, is that, is that a car. Is, is not an asset, it's a commodity. Correct. Right? And so we're, we're finding people want to flip out of their vehicles three, four, five years down the road, right? Yep. And so what's nice about the lease is that your exit strategy is built in. Exactly. Right? One of the biggest sticking points or friction points during the sales process is, is one of two things and always has to do with your old car is the trade-in value, right? Nobody likes to trade-in value, and I understand why, because we have to offer wholesale, you would like it closer to retail, I get that. Yeah. Um, but that's just the business model, unfortunately. Or you sell it yourself privately, and you've done that before. Done that. And it's not always the f most fun experience. It was less than a fun experience. <laughs> and I sell these every day. <clears throat> it was not an easy task. Um, it's, it was just, it's a lot easier to trade in your vehicle. Um, now there's multiple ways you can look at trading in your vehicle towards a lease. Some people would not want to trade in their lease, or sorry, trade in their vehicle towards a lease because what it does is it drops your payment. Fantastic, right? Yeah. But it also drops your payment on a finance end of things. Again, fantastic. But at the end, if you chose a lease at the end of that, say, for instance, five years, your payment is relatively small. When you're going to get into another vehicle, your payment will then rise. Right. So you'd end up choosing either another vehicle, another model, or a different term. Right. Um, so what I have suggested in the past for customers is have us buy your vehicle and you do whatever you'd like with that money. Put it into an account, have that money fund your lease. So yeah. it's, you're actually free and clear of a, of a payment. That the, your vehicle that you're trading is making that payment for you. Great option. So you're used to a set payment, right? And when it comes time to when that money is dwindled enough, then you just start putting money into that account and you're good to go. Um, it keeps you not in the sticker shock when it comes around time to get another vehicle. Right, right. right. And especially because on the finance end of things, if you have a payment in mind, let's say three hundred and thirty dollars you want your payment to be, Correct. right? And let's say you're on a more expensive vehicle. Yeah. The only way to get that payment down, short of putting a big down payment down, which which 
not everybody can do, is extending the term, Correct. right, five, six, seven, eight years, yeah. which will bring the payment down, but then we run into that issue, or, or the consumer runs into that issue of, I want a new car in five years, I still have three years worth of payments left, and there's that graph that it's not intersecting in terms of your loan and the value of your vehicle, the loan could still be higher than the value, and now you're in a negative equity situation, and, and that's again an exit strategy issue where you might want or, or possibly need something different, and now you can't get it because you can't get out of the other one. Exactly. It's, I said this to a customer just the other day, is she was financing for a seven year term, and the payment was right for her, and that's why she chose a finance. She's always done a finance. <coughs> and she came to me with three years left on her, on her loan and said, I'd like to get into another vehicle. So we discussed some numbers, and I said, I'd like you to lease. And she was curious, and I don't know if I want to lease. I said, well, you're looking to get out now. Essentially, you've been leasing all along. And she goes, okay, well, show me the, show me the dollars. So I showed her the figures, and I was within pennies of her existing payment on a brand new car yeah. that had considerably more more, more features. More to it, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So it was a no-brainer for her to jump into another vehicle, into another lease, uh, or into a lease, and be driving away happy. Right. So your, your, your top three reasons for leasing? Well, uh, payment, not being locked into what your vehicle's worth at the end. Um, and just keeping up with the times, right? where it's uh, fuel mileages, safety features, um, and just overall style. And that's actually, you know, we didn't, we, you know, that's a good point to bring up because we didn't even talk about that. But cars are advancing so fast now. Yeah. Like it, it, I was laughing about this the other day with somebody because Infinity is Nissan's high-end division, right? right? Correct. But you could go into an Infinity, even three years old, and it is substantially less equipped than an equivalent Nissan product would be right now. Correct. Like it, it, it advances so quickly that people have this, this hunger to want to always be, you know, like phones are a good example, right? Yeah. Like how often do you upgrade your phone? Every year. Don't ask me that question. It's, it's a gross <laughs> answer. But I mean, cars are no different. Cars are more powerful than your phone. And, and features change all the time. So the, the lease is a beautiful thing. As long as they continue to remain competitive. Absolutely. With, with, the, with the rates, right? There's another couple big reasons why people will want to lease. Um, they're fearful, or may not want to lease, they're fearful of condition. They're, maybe someone they know has had a situation where they've leased and they've had to have penalties on for over kilometers or they damaged the vehicle more than what they felt would be allotted. Right. Um, I can tell you I've been leasing since 1997 with other brands, now my fourth with Nissan. Um, I've never been faced with a, with a penalty. I have never been in an over kilometers. I've been close, but I've never been faced in a penalty for damages. Um, one thing I like to do is just go to, uh, say, a customer's vehicle and ask them one question. Is this the way you typically have your vehicle? And the answer is yes. Then based on that present condition, would you suggest any extra insurances for a lease that can cover any damages, possibly? Or say, based on your present vehicle, this is the way it normally is, you have no fear on right. leasing. Your right. kilometers are low enough, your vehicle's in great presentation, there's no reason. But what if you were to get an accident? Nissan's program is called Guaranteed Asset Protection. If you were to get an accident, you are not penalized for the accident, where on an ownership end of things, you could be. Um, you get it fixed, everything looks great, but when you go to trade that vehicle in, that has to be disclosed to the potential next buyer. and therefore there's it's not at the same value as one sure. not yep. in an accident with mm -hmm. a lease it doesn't matter you get an accident two three times maybe once maybe none uh, that really doesn't matter nissan doesn't penalize you for that what if it gets written off if it's if your financed vehicle is written off well then you're could be arguing with insurance on what your vehicle's worth mm -hmm. and that's never a fun time uh, you're always hoping to have your loan paid off 
with a lease and your vehicle's written off, it's over. Right then and there, you don't owe anybody any money. It's a, an agreement between Nissan and your insurance company, and you get into a new car. Yeah, which is great. It's just that easy. It's just that easy. So let's wrap this up with talking about how the lease ends, right? Because we got questions on that too. People Absolutely. don't understand how that process works. Yep. It's actually fairly simple. Fairly simple. Um, at the end of your lease, say you did a three year lease, you, you're always going to be in contact with your sales rep. At least you should be. <laughs> You. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, they have questions. You're always there to answer your, answer their questions. Um, so Nissan would contact them and say, hey, your lease is going to be due in two months, three months, six months, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, Nissan has a company that they work with a lot. This is the same company that Toyota, Ford, Hyundai, everyone who leases works with. So it's, they don't work for Nissan and they want to inspect your vehicle. Their idea is to give you an idea of any possible damages or penalties that you could expect at the end of your lease. Um, they give you a dollar figure, say it's $500. So you have a damaged windshield, maybe damaged tires. They do not drive your vehicle, so they're not looking at brakes. They're just looking at damages inside and out the vehicle that are outside. Yeah. Um, and they give you that quote unquote bill and say it's $500. Your next phone call should be to your salesperson. Say, I just got my in inspection done. They're saying I have a $500 potential bill. My next reply is, are we gonna be looking at that vehicle that we've been discussing? Are we going forward on that lease that we've been discussing? Yes or no. If we are, Nissan's got a great program again that they're going to cover the first $500 of your said damages. Right. So that lease that you've got this damage on goes away. Goes away. Yeah. Nissan absorbs that for you, and that's fantastic. So there's many different reasons why you'd want to lease, and that's one. So you can choose to return the vehicle, get into another one. You can buy the vehicle and drive that one away. Fantastic or the dealership can buy it, right? From yep. your, it, there's yeah, right. multiple e uh, ends to it, but the idea is either you can buy it or you can return yeah. it. That's the bottom and line. It's just that easy. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you very much for, you. for helping with this. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. If you have any questions, uh, follow-up questions, comments, suggestions, shoot me an email, marcus.luft at halfwaymotors.com. Or if you want to talk to Ty, it's ty.alderdice, A-L-D-E-R-I-C-E. -E. No, Alder, A-L-D-E-R-D-I-C-E. Hi, Alderdice at halfwaymotors.com. Thanks, everyone.